As I understand, you gave orders to evacuate the city right away. Yes, I didn't sleep at all that night. I was watching television since it was the only source of information. I kept thinking, what should we do about the radiation from Fukushima? How should I inform and evacuate people? Mobile phones didn't work because there was no signal, so radio was the only way to get any information across. On the morning of March 12th, I announced an emergency evacuation. I thought that radiation would not reach the mountains and we would be safe if we left the city. I told people to head to a town just 50 kilometers away, to Kawamata. There's just one road that goes there and it was packed with cars. Later, I learned that not all Futaba residents heard my announcement. I feel incredibly guilty about that. Back then, I believed that residents would be safe in Kawamata. It is much further away from the plant than the government recommended evacuation zone of 10 to 20 kilometers. Later, I found out that the Fukushima prefecture has withheld a lot of information. And now the government isn't taking any steps to ensure people's safety from radiation, and it isn't even monitoring the implementation of evacuation procedures. But you decided to evacuate people from Futaba as far as possible without consulting anybody, so you completely assumed responsibility. Our city always had an emergency plan in case of a fire or an accident at the plant. Every year we had special drills in case there's a fire at the plant. I think it's the central government and the Fukushima prefecture authorities that bear the brunt of responsibility for what happened. And as Futaba's mayor, it was my responsibility to take care of the people of my city. I had no time to get any advice. I tried talking to prefecture authorities, but there was absolute chaos. It was impossible to hold a meeting. So I chose to act on my own, and I decided to start with evacuating people as far from radiation as possible. Your town has moved to a new location, to the neighboring city of Iwaki. Is it safe there, and do you see this as a new start for these people? I'd like to show you a table with radiation levels around Chernobyl. Radiation levels around Fukushima are four times higher than in Chernobyl. So I think it's too early for people to come back to Fukushima prefecture. Here you can see radiation levels in our region uh, Tohoku. This is the epicenter of the earthquake and the radiation radius is 50 to 100 kilometers, even 200 kilometers in fact. Fukushima Prefecture is at the very center of this. The city of Iwaki, where Futaba citizens moved, is also located in Fukushima Prefecture. It is by no means safe, no matter what the government says. Exposing people to the current level of radiation in Fukushima is a violation of human rights. It's terrible. But nevertheless, evacuation advisories are started to be lifted for some cities in the Fukushima area. But you're saying that the government is allowing this despite the danger of radiation? The Fukushima prefecture has launched a come-home campaign. In many cases, evacuees are forced to return. Here's a map of Fukushima prefecture with areas hit by radiation highlighted in yellow and you can see that the color covers almost the entire map. Air contamination decreased a little, but soil contamination remains high. And there are still about 2 million people living in the prefecture who have all sorts of medical issues. The authorities claim this has nothing to do with the radiation fallout from Fukushima. But I demanded that the authorities substantiate their claim in writing. Yet they ignored my request. There are some terrible things going on in Fukushima. I remember being touched to the core by the plight of the victims of Chernobyl. I could barely hold back tears whenever I heard any reports about that terrible tragedy. And now, when a similar tragedy happened in Fukushima, there's no one to help us. We must not forget the lessons of Chernobyl. We must protect our children. I talked to local authorities in different places in Fukushima, but no one would listen to me. They believe what the government says. 
while in reality radiation is still there and it is killing our children. They are dying of heart conditions, asthma, leukemia, thyroid complications. Lots of kids are extremely exhausted after school. Others are simply unable to attend PE classes. But the authorities are still hiding the truth from us, and I don't know why. Don't they have children of their own? It hurts so much to know that they can't protect our children. But I understand many children who have been evacuated are now living in the Fukushima district again. New schools have opened for these children, and you're saying that they're facing radiation there. Is anything being done to help the children affected by the nuclear fallout? Officially, both the central government and the prefecture authorities say there is no radiation. They're not doing anything, and they're not going to do anything. They say Fukushima Prefecture is safe, and that's why nobody's working to evacuate children, move them elsewhere. We're not even allowed to discuss this. I'm concerned about the future of my hometown, the future of Futaba. You know, there is information nowadays that Japan's homeless are among those recruited to take part in the major cleanup. I mean, are they a viable workforce in this case? Is this because there's a lack of qualified workers or because those people are considered sort of disposable? And is it even true? Is this information even true? Unfortunately, it's true. If you use workers on a one-off basis, you don't have to watch out for radiation, you don't need to care about their health. We must respect people, care about them. When talking about the Tokyo Olympics in 2020, Prime Minister Abe likes to talk about Japanese hospitality, and he uses this Japanese word, omotenashi, which literally means that you should treat people with an open heart. But in reality, that isn't happening. While Prime Minister Noda was busy promoting himself, authorities began to care less about people who worked at the Fukushima plant. Their equipment was getting worse, preparation was getting worse, so people had to think about their safety first. That's why those who understood the real danger of radiation began to quit. Now we have unprofessional people working there. They don't really understand what they're doing. That's the kind of people who would use the wrong pump, for example, who make mistakes like that. I'm particularly concerned about their leaders. It seems to me their team leaders aren't real professionals. They don't know what they're doing. I am really ashamed for my country. But I have to speak the truth for the sake of keeping our planet clean in the future. The fact that the government was covering up the real scale of the disaster for so long, has anything to do with traditional Japanese fear of losing face? They simply wanted to avoid responsibility. No, I understand that, but why keep this quiet for so long? Why didn't they tell the world how bad it really was? Why is that? There were some sad chapters in the history of Japan. The same thing happened with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The authorities lied to everyone. They said it was safe. They hid the truth. That's the situation we're living in. It's not just Fukushima. Japan has a lot of dark history. What's happening now is a sort of a sacrifice to the past. But talking about Fukushima, the United Nations report on the radiation fallout from Fukushima says no radiation-related deaths or acute diseases have been observed among the workers and the general public exposed. So it's not that dangerous after all, or is there not enough information available to make proper assessments? What do you think? This report is completely false. The report was made by a representative of Japan, Professor Hayano. Representing Japan, he lied to the whole world from the UN podium. When I was mayor, I knew many people who died from heart attacks, and then there were also many people in Fukushima who died suddenly, even young people. It's a real shame that the authorities are hiding the truth from the whole world.
We need to admit that many people are actually dying. We're not allowed to say that, but even TEPCO employees, they're also dying. But everyone's keeping mum about it. Do you have an estimate of casualties? I don't, I don't have the numbers with me today. Sir, we only need an approximate estimate, just to understand the scale of the tragedy you're talking about. Mm, it's a huge responsibility to give specific numbers. It's hard for me, because I haven't studied this matter personally. But it's not just one or two people. We're talking about 10 to 20 people who died this way. Time. But one day, we'll follow the example of Europe, of Germany. Have you personally felt the consequences of the catastrophe? Has your health been affected? Yes, I now get tired quicker, it's getting harder to speak, I often get colds, my eyesight's gotten worse, I have a cataract, my stomach hurts, my skin is very dry, my muscles are weak in different parts of my body. These are all the consequences of the catastrophe. Are you receiving any aid as somebody who's been affected by the catastrophe? No, I'm not getting any treatment right now. Actually, there is no place I could go for help. I now live in Saitama. The nearest hospital refused to take me in. So I'm just eating healthy. Hopefully, it'll fix me up. Mr. Adagama, first of all, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for this insight. Thank you for sharing your memories with us. I really hope you do get better. I hope all of the Japanese people who have suffered the consequences get better. And I hope that Japan eventually overcomes this catastrophe.